Hello, this is Margaret Knoll with the League of Women Voters of Portland, and you are watching the Video Voters Guide. We, in cooperation with Metro East Community Media, are here interviewing candidates running in the May 2020 primary election. With me today is Cameron Witten, running for Metro Councilor District 5. Welcome, Cameron. Thank you so much for having me here today. Could you please tell us a little about yourself and why you were running? Thanks, Margaret. So my name is Cameron Witten. I am a small business owner. I'm a community activist. I'm a nonprofit executive, and I'm a candidate for Metro Council District 5. And I'm running for Metro Council because I don't want to see Portland become just another overpriced West Coast city. At one point, I was a 18-year-old homeless youth on the streets of Portland. I have seen personally the deep disparities here in our society. But at the same time, I have seen the best of Portland. Thanks to the generosity of local nonprofits and the people who live here, I and others like me had accesses to resources so that we could find housing, find employment, and ultimately define our own futures. But we are facing a crisis in our region, growing inequality, uh, the looming climate emergency, or the fact that our communities are more diverse than ever, and yet we're seeing our institutions and policies stagnate and are leaving people behind. As our regional government, Metro could be poised to deliver bold solutions on our most critical issues. But we need a new kind of politics, and we need leadership that understands and represents the lived experiences of the people who live in our district. <laughs> if elected, I will bring more than a decade of Portland-grown leadership both lived and executive to Metro Council. I have served on government advisory committees for TriMet, City of Portland, Multnomah County. I have been a champion for inclusion and serving our most vulnerable as a nonprofit executive director for groups like Know Your City and Q Center. And I have helped to pass legislation and I've helped to lead movements and organizations to advocate uh, on behalf of all Portlanders. And so, you know, we're grateful to have a campaign that's been endorsed by over 150 community leaders and organizations, and it speaks to our vision for Metro, working with a broad, diverse, and inclusive coalition so that we can provide bold solutions to ensure that Portland has an economy that works for all, that we have bold and courageous leadership on affordable housing, that we take action on climate in a way that includes and uplifts our entire community. You can find out more on my website, wittenfororegon.com. Okay, so tell me what challenges to the effective and efficient operation of our metro government will result from the pandemic, and how do you propose to meet those challenges? Thank you. The pandemic has sh sent shockwaves through our society. Uh, I was originally born in New Jersey. I have uh, most of my you know, remote family who lives in New Jersey. I've already lost family members and I know that they aren't the last. We are all seeing the shock waves of this pandemic and we know that our society has changed forever. Uh, Metro as a regional government is uniquely impacted by this. As many of you all might have seen in the news, Metro laid off 40% of its entire workforce. And as our regional government, it's very interesting because unlike other governments that we have here, so much of Metro's revenue comes from fee for service, whether that's from our venues, whether that's from the solid waste system, whether that's from construction excise, so much of what we, you know, Metro actually provides in services comes from these fees and we're facing an uncertain future. Uh, the reality is, is that we haven't planned for this. And as Metro Counselor, I will use my background as somebody who's been a leader of multiple organizations that have gone through transition, that have gone through financial crises, and I will bring that lens that we need to start doing crisis planning, to really do a deep assessment of the work that we're doing, you know, working closely with our COO and all of our staff and our, and our council to ensure that we are doing real time responsive work. You know, we can't just be looking, you know, what do we do for a year from now? We have to be looking immediately at what's happening next week and really evaluating our budget. You know, Metro's losing upwards of, you know, 
11 million a month now because of the economic shutdown. So we have to take seriously assessing everything that we're doing. It's not gonna be hard, easy. We have so many governments and businesses and people who are having to face layoffs and closing down facilities. We are not alone, but we have to do that work. And we also have to stay resilient and realize that we will emerge from this and we need to emerge from this as strong as possible. Metro needs to be on the forefront of creating a pandemic resiliency plan so this never happens again. We only have about three minutes left and then we have three questions. So the next one is, um, Metro is in the process of drafting a regional transportation measure. What expectations do you have that the planned expenditures will ex achieve state and national goals for reducing greenhouse gas emissions? Thank you. We have a limited window to address our looming climate emergency. This transportation measure is important and it's brought an entire region together to be looking at you know, 40% of our emissions come from transportation. It is not too far enough. That's why I'm a huge champion for congestion pricing. We need to do more to address the issue of greenhouse emissions. And in addition to doing that on transportation, we have to be looking at our solid waste system. We need to look at our waste streams, especially when it comes to food, when it comes to uh, other uh, paper and plastic. We have to look at these waste streams and make sure that Metro is also leading in that area so that we prevent increasing greenhouse gases. Great. Um, how would you assess Metro's efforts to address the affordable housing and homelessness crisis? For, so for more than a decade, I have seen and worked on our affordable housing crisis. You know, I was calling on local leaders to take action long before there was a housing state of emergency that was declared. And sadly, we acted too late and the problem has only grown worse. And now the resources that we need to address the problem have become even more. And so we know this is a regional crisis. We hear it from our business community, from teachers, students, parents, from everybody. We need Metro to be a leader. We've just taken our first steps. And I, as somebody who's been a housing champion, someone who's endorsed by 14 of Portland's most prominent affordable housing leaders, I, as Metro Counselor, I will help to build that coalition so that we have a regional affordable housing plan and that the 25 jurisdictions within Metro are all equipped and empowered to deliver affordable housing goals for our entire region. What is your position on the Metro Ballot Measure 26210 to support homeless services with a high earners tax and a business profits tax? And could you please explain? Thank you. Uh, the reality is, is that we're dealing with an affordable housing crisis and a, house, you know, and a homelessness crisis. The crisis became so serious that the heads of the three counties, Clackamas, Washington, Multnomah, went to Metro saying that we need regional leadership. I applaud the work that we've seen happen here in Portland and Multnomah County, where uh, historic levels of funding have gone into affordable housing and homelessness services. But if you're a homeless family in Washington or Clackamas, you're not looking what county line am I in, where do I go for services? We need these resources to be region wide because we know that the challenge is so serious and that there are bold solutions to addressing homelessness, they're just underfunded. So if we wanna actually address this, we have to look at it through a regional level. And I've been widely outspoken. You, you can see me on the Here Together Facebook page. I've been working with these leaders to ensure that we do get this passed because we don't have another option. Well, thank you very much. Um, this has been the Video Voters Guide. Thank you for watching. The primary election is on Tuesday, May 19th. Please inform yourself about the candidates and ballot measures and exercise your right to vote.